Welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. I'm Tony Guerra, pharmacist, publisher, and professional editor, bringing you interviews and advice on succeeding in your residency journey. You can sign up for the email list at pharmacyresidencypodcast.com to get your free LOI template or get editing help working one-on-one with me at residency.teachable.com. Let's get started with the show. All right, welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. Thanksgiving is over. You're at the weekend and you're thinking, how did it get so close to ASHP mid-year? So maybe you're going to have a full week coming up and then you fly into Vegas next week. But now you've got to figure out, okay, what am I going to do? How much have I prepared? Uh, How can I prepare? And that's what today is about. But the big thing is that there's going to be a big shift in your confidence from now until two weeks from now. And I want to talk about that because I think that what happens is students go into Vegas and they're thinking, all right, great, I'm going to you know, get to know these programs. I'm going to go on kind of like a buffet and a shopping trip. We're going to kind of choose what I want. And what you find out is that you actually feel much worse than you did going in. And I want to kind of explain that. So here's a couple of points that I want to make. The first thing is that when we were back in 2019, when I went to Vegas, uh, there were just about 7,000 participating in the match. Now, this isn't quite what goes to Vegas, but you can see as you move the the line over um, that you're going from 6,990 and now we are at 64.17, so about 500 fewer applicants uh, when we have three years later. Okay? But what we also have is we had 46.17 positions. Oops, let's make sure this is uh, 46.54 positions offered, and now we're at 52.32. So it's about, we're just using very big you know, whole numbers here, so we're about 500 fewer applicants about 500 more positions offered and so those two numbers are coming together uh, which means that there's going to be more opportunity but there's also going to be more selection and it makes it even harder to figure out like what's exactly right for me so when you go on the showcase website uh, and they're very excited about this here we go uh, that there are over 860 programs from almost every state And when you look at the exhibitor list, you say, well, 860, it says 900 and something. So you go down here and you see that 971 is Yuma Medical Center. And let's make this a little bit bigger. So some of you guys are using your uh, phones and so forth. But you can see that, oh, okay, we're going to have WVU as as going to have a bunch of different ones. We're going to count each of them as an individual Uh, one, but they're not going to have an individual booth necessarily. Uh, So that's what I'm guessing is happening. Although you have 971 um, areas, uh, you're going to actually have, um, you actually have 700 uh, or 860 um, sites. And they say that's the biggest ever, which is great. That means that you're going to have plenty of time, plenty of room uh, to get going. So here's the map itself, and let's see if I can make this a little bit smaller. Yeah, okay. All right, and what you're gonna find is that there's this kind of areas over here where you can kind of chill out a bit, and then here's the madness uh, in these kind of um, halls of, uh, you know, in, in between or in the rows and so forth. And what I would do is I would treat this as a couple of marathons. Now there are some crazies that do uh, the challenge where one weekend they do the Des Moines marathon and the next weekend they do the Kansas city marathon, or you can do half marathon, half marathon, which would be reasonable for me. I could, I could do half and half, but what you want to do is you want to make sure that you schedule your breaks for yourself. And that may seem strange. You're like, well, I'm going to, I got three hours and I've got this list. Okay, well, you say, well, I don't even know how much time it's going to take me to get to each program and if I'm going to get all my questions answered and things like that. And what I would do is try to get all three hours in, but take breaks and bring food. 
and bring drinks and most importantly, comfortable shoes. So it is professional. It is not business casual, although every once in a while you'll see somebody in like a golf shirt or you see somebody uh, who, who isn't dressed professionally. But in general, you're going to see suits and ties. You're going to see uh, business suits and, and so forth. So the big thing is that up until now, you've kind of had this, the, the, the most recent acceptance you had was to pharmacy school. And your acceptance rate, uh, depending on the school, but your expect, ex, acceptance rate as a group with all of the other schools of pharmacy uh, is about 82%. So four out of five got into pharmacy school. So it's not really a good measure of where you stand in terms of getting in uh, to residency. Okay? And everything you've done since then has probably been a success. And now you're given a situation where you're applying and everything's so far so good. You've started to do maybe your letters, you've started to do your CV, you've started to look at some programs. But all of a sudden, you're going to start getting pushed around. You're going to start seeing how many people are applying. And you're going to start taking a look at what other people are writing. And you're going to look at their letters and go, whoa, one of two things is, well, one of three things is going to happen. And I do recommend you look at your classmates' letters and kind of say like, okay, well, what, do you, what does yours look like? What does mine look like? Let's do a little comparison. Either you're going to feel that yours is better than theirs, but that's an N of one. And yours is worse than theirs, again, an N of one, or yours is about the same. And what happens is, is that that's the beginning. That's where you start comparing. But then when you actually see how many people are applying to these various sites, you start thinking, whoa, wait a minute. This is what it means to have 100 people apply for eight spots. Okay? And you're going to start doubting yourself and your confidence is going to start going down and you're going to start saying, whoa, am, am I really the best for this? And then you're going to start hearing, well, this person was president and this person uh, did this thing nationally and, and so forth. And what you want to do is not try to beat people on your the strength of what you've done, but on the strength of how you match. Okay. So when you're doing your letter, the most common mistake that people make is to write a letter that is not about matching, but is highlighting everything you've done without talking about them. And if you've ever talked to someone that talks about themselves the whole time, you know how that goes. Okay, so our first step is to start talking about how it connects to what you want to do, but also how you connect to them. Okay. And so if you go to residency.teachable.com, I have a couple of free things for you. Just go to the Extreme LOI Makeover course. And if you look here, okay, um, I've got a pediatric you know, letter of intent. Um, this is meant really for people thinking about children's hospitals and things like that. And then I talk a little bit about the BCPPS and how to talk about something that you want in your future. So, yep, you know what? There's other people that might have more activities than you, but the question is, is that are your experiences more relevant to what makes sense for a pediatric residency? And are you a better match? Okay. Um, so if you go down a little bit, there's the first thing that I want you to watch and listen to. It's only a little bit less than 12 minutes. And that's using the letter of intent to be, build your residency vision. Okay. If you don't have a vision as you're going in there, as you go into showcase, and you're going to see everybody else, it's going to seem like, wait a minute, why do they all seem to, to get it? Why do they all seem to have um, their stuff together? Why do they seem to all know what they're doing? And the reason could be a couple fold. One of them is uh, that you've only used the template or you've only used the template and just kind of filled in the blanks. I am, you know, I want to express my interest in and you just put in the residency site. I was happy to meet your and then you're just going to put in the names of the people and then you're just going to put a couple of things that you did. But you really haven't gone deep, you've gone very shallow. 
And because you really don't know who you are, that's going to bother you. But especially if you are one of the perfectionist type pharmacy students who just says, you know what, I, I just, I don't feel comfortable doing this if it's not perfect. Okay. And if it's not perfect, I, I'm just not going to be my best self. And then there goes your confidence. Okay. So where right now you're thinking, okay, you know, I've got this kind of thing. I'm going to go to Vegas. I've never been there before. It's going to be a neat experience. I'm going to start talking to a couple programs, going to learn more about them. I'm going to apply to a bunch of sites. I'm going to get a residency. Okay. All of a sudden, what's going to happen is you're going to start thinking, wait a minute, am I going to get this residency? There's so many people that want it. How am I going to get this residency? Am I good enough to get it? Oh my gosh, what happens if I don't get any residency? What happens if none of my if I don't get any interviews and if I don't match at all. And this happens over and over again. Nothing causes imposter syndrome more than going to that showcase because you're not only going to start measuring yourself against other people and their, what they've done in pharmacy school, you're going to start looking at yourself and you're going to start comparing and you're going to be like, oh my gosh. It's, and it just, it makes no logical sense, but it makes a lot of emotional sense. So not only are you going to start to get exhausted, but you're going to start getting into a place uh, where all of a sudden you're just like, okay, well, I, I saw the sites I want to see. I, I just going to be done. Um, let me go get some lunch before the big crowds come. Okay. But what you actually want to do is the opposite. You want to take advantage of every minute of those showcases the three of them and what you want to do is get out of your own head and you want to start getting in there and start using it as all right well let's see if i can find some places that i haven't thought of before instead of i have to get this list done which many of you will be at you can start saying oh all right well i didn't know about this one let me check this one out and you start talking to people and are you taking breaks? Are you scheduling those breaks? If you don't schedule the breaks, if you don't schedule those times, yeah, you'll get exhausted after three hours. You'll certainly be exhausted if you try to go to lunch and try to get lunch in Vegas on that second day when there's all those people there. So it really comes down to how do I build my confidence? Okay, And it all starts with writing a letter of intent where you are genuinely applying to your number one site, you talk about the things that you want to do and you want to talk about those things that seem to really resonate with who you are and what you want to do and who you want to serve. And once you start going from that point, now you start saying, okay, where are the places that I can serve in that way? Okay, where are the places that I can serve children or I can serve geriatric patients, or I can serve the community, or I can serve all those things. Once you get to that place, that's where you're in a very positive light. So, all right, well, again, I wanted to keep this under 15 minutes, but the big thing is, you know, if you haven't written this because you had all these obligations with Thanksgiving, because you have your obligations with Appies, um, then you really, really want to get one letter done. And if you can't get one letter done, get one paragraph done. If you can't get one paragraph done, just listen to the 12 minutes about using the letter of intent to build your residency vision. Just go to residency.teachable.com, scroll down. It's the very first part of the application video and audio guide. And you're going to re-engage with why you're doing this in the first place instead of, okay, yes, there's a lot of people. Yes, there's going to be people that are better than you. Yes, there are going to be people that match better than you. But if your story is more compelling, if you've articulated your story in a more compelling way, if you have written this letter in such a way that it matches what you expect, which if for many of you is going to be perfection, then you are in good shape. And that that's really what I'm here for. Although I deliver peace of mind, uh, the peace of mind doesn't just really come from the fact that it's done. The peace of mind comes from looking at it and then saying, wow, I could compare this to other people's and mine really is the best I've seen. 
or compared to other people, I am at the top level. And so that's really what we're trying to do. It's we're trying to make sure that we are doing this at the highest level so that when you go into residency, when you go into those uh, booths, when you go into the you know, different areas, you know, whether you're going to the receptions that are for the states or for the individual colleges, you're so clear on what you want to do that when you're invited from the residency floor to go to one of those, you're again just going through and talking about your vision. But if you just took the UCSF template or the ACCP template, you just filled in a couple things, got the letter done, that's not going to have done what needs to happen which is to have a very, very good sense of why you're doing what you're doing. So again, I'm here to help you, residency.teachable.com, or you can always email me at TonyThePharmacist at gmail.com. Um, when we work together, uh, really the first contact and the first time you know, I send you something back is within 48 hours. So all of a sudden, you've gone from I've got nothing done to I've got something done. I've got a little bit or I've got it done at a certain level of quality, and now I've got it at a very high level of quality. I've got it where I've started the process, but now I'm getting close to finishing the process. And again, that's what I started this to do. I know that you guys are busy. I know that you don't uh, necessarily have time to do all these things. And the key is, you know, have you done the tough work of writing a single letter to the single site that you feel would be the very best for you? Um, later on, we'll talk about how you may have one to three sites that you're really, really closely connected to, but how do you make those fourth, fifth, and sixth sites that you're going to be applying to uh, feel like, yeah, you know, they're also a top choice for you. All right, well, that's it. I went over 15 minutes, but um, yeah, give me a contact or whatever. I know you guys are busy, but I, again, want to be here as a resource to help you. Thanks for listening to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. You might also like to check out our available residency audiobooks at pharmacyresidencypodcast.com forward slash books, where you can get your first book free if you've never been on Audible before, or work one-on-one with me as a professional editor at residency.teachable.com. Feel free to send an invite to connect with me, Tony PharmD, on LinkedIn, or email me at tonythepharmacist at gmail.com with questions. Music was by Policy.